Hey everyone, my name is Tom Krause, welcome to my channel. Today we're going to take a look at LibreChat and what it can do for us. So why would we use LibreChat and what is LibreChat? So first of all I think we need to take a look at ChatGPT in general. So ChatGPT is a, a web interface where you can ask questions to um, an AI, open AI, and it will give you answers. It will write some code, it can do lots of different things. There is a free version and a paid version. The paid version includes ChatGPT version 4, which is a much more advanced than the free version. But in order to get access to ChatGPT 4, you must also have an account and pay a subscription, which is 20 euros a month. Um, open AI API costs. Now, it's worth noting that if you don't use it, you lose it. So if you pay 20 euros a month and you're on holidays and then you can't use ChatGPT, then that money is gone. You, you've never made use of it. The nice thing about the APIs is that it's um, pay for what you use, you know? You pay for what you use. And that's what LibreChat does. LibreChat connects via the APIs. So you only pay for what you use. It's really good. Um, the language models are charged. Uh, the charging is like uh, 1,000 tokens. Um, for every 1,000 tokens you get a charge. Uh, tokens are about 750 words and this paragraph is 35 tokens. So, so 10 times that paragraph would be 350 tokens and uh, 30 times this would be approximately approximately 1,000 tokens. So 30 times that is approximately 1,000 tokens. Okay. Um, you've got lots of different models here. We're only interested in the ChatGPT4 turbo one now I think well maybe any of them it doesn't matter and each of them have a cost you have an upload cost so say for example you would like it to analyze some text or code this is what it costs to upload it and you want to download some code this is what it costs to download download some new code right so point three for every 1000 tokens I mean it's it's it's, it's very cheap you have lots of different models you have the GPT-4 GPT turbo the 3.5 turbo I find the 3.5 turbo quite good and it's really cheap I mean look it's really, really cheap. Um, I'm not sure if it's a 3.5 Turbo that's used on the free version or not, but I mean, this is so cheap. Uh, uh, 0.0001, 0 0 .001 uh, of a cent per 1,000 tokens. I mean, it's, it's as good as free as anything. Uh, then you've got different other models, like an assistant model. You've got um, different GPT models that are really cheap. The Da Vinci one is a little bit dearer. Uh, you've got embedded models, base models, and other models. The Dali Tree model is quite good because it allows you to pull pictures down. Um, but it gets quite expensive, like eight cents per image for one of the standard ones, and twelve cents for some of the HD ones. So it can get expensive. In the Dali Two, the image quality is not as good. Actually, it's nowhere near as good. And it's much cheaper, as you can see, it's 1.6 1, 1 cent per image for the cheapest one. This is a really good one for testing, so if you're building some code and you want to test it out, it's good because it's really cheap. Uh, there's lots of other more um, audio models, there's text-to-speech and speech-to-text, blah, 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 blah. But we're, not, we're just we're not interested in that stuff for now. So, so let's take a look at L-I-B-R-E, Libre Chat. Uh, okay, we want to go to the GitHub page. GitHub page. So if we go into um, this one, this is the one we're interested in. Um, you can read what it's about. It's uh, enhanced chat GPT clone. I like this version by Danny Vera. It's an enhanced chat version clone. With, it's an enhanced chat GPT clone with, with OpenAI, which is the one we all know and love, GPT chat, GPT chat version four vision. Uh, you have the Bing one, you have the Anthropic. Anthropic is one cr is one created by two people who left OpenAI. Uh, you've got OpenRouter, which is like a combination of a bunch of them. You've got Palm 2, which is Google's one, and blah, 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 blah. And, and another important one is the plugins. So the plugins allow you to do a bit of web scraping and to do some um, more, more enhanced image, image manipulation. Okay, so what are we interested in here? You can read this page yourself, a lot of useful information, a nice video about what the tool is. You have many different ways to install it, but let's just get started, right? So we're going to use Docker, okay? So let's make sure we have Docker set up on our system. So we've got to do a sudo apt update in order to make sure we update all of our repositories. With the latest version. Uh, you can see you've got a Docker 
install, you've got a Linux direct install, a Mac install, and a Windows install. The Docker install is probably the best one, I think, because it also has um, apt install docker.io. But we also want to install Python 3 and ppython 3. Pip. Let's let all that run in the background. We can go back here. Um, you've offered different ways. You've lots of different ways to install it, but I really prefer the Docker one because there's a, there's a few different images inside the Docker one. There's a few different pieces of software you need to worry about. You need to worry about Mongo, uh, our Linux system, and all of the different components and dependencies. Pulling in Docker images just means they're already there. It's really simple, okay? Now, um, one more thing I want to do is I want to do a pip install docker compose. You want to make sure docker compose is installed as well. Now, if I do a docker ps, I get really funky error. Um, it could be docker's not started or I don't have permissions. One of the things we need to do is to make sure, sure we have the right permissions. So let's add the docker group to the group of our user. Um, ah, okay, nice. I forgot to put the sudo in. A nice little tip here is if you forget, if you do forget to put sudo in front of a command, a nice little tip I always do is if you do sudo exclamation mark exclamation mark, it just reruns the previous command with, with sudo in front of it. Yay. Now, even though I've added my user to the Docker group, it doesn't always work, so they recommend you log out. So I'm just going to reboot. Uh, I'll be back in a second. Okay. Welcome back. Uh, let's open up our windows again. We should be good to go. Okay, so um, let's do the next step, which is we'll take a look at the Docker Compose. Docker Compose installation guide. Our main thing here is the git clone command. So we need to clone, which we need to go into a directory. We go to our home directory and we run it from there. Please run it somewhere else. I mean, this is a disposable machine I'm doing this on, so I don't really care where I put it. Um, it's creating a directory called LibreChat. And you can see the internet directory. And we've got a couple of files here that we care about. Actually, we didn't do well. Sorry, LS minus. What happened? I must F11. Yeah, LS minus A. Okay. We have a few files we care about. We care about the Docker Compose file. And we compare, care about the env example file. Uh, why do we compare about, care about these? Because these are two critical files we need. The env example file is basically just a template of what our .env file should look like. As you see here, there is no .env file. So the first thing we got to do is just copy it. Is copy over the env file to .env. Oops, that was a mistake. ENV. Uh, I can take a quick look at this file. Um, this file contains just some information about the the uh, Docker container and the, the application title, some port information where the Mongo database is, blah 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 blah, some um, UIDs, group IDs, and all of the different tokens you need in order to access all of the different chat engines. Um, one thing it's worth noting is just down the bottom here. Let me see if I can see it should be in the user management, this one here, right? Allow user registration. That's set to true. When you first log into this tool, it asks you to create an account. And you create an admin account. But if you do not change this to false after you do the initial account creation, it means anyone else can log in and create a new account. So I highly recommend you change that to false after you create your first account, okay? So let's not change anything. Let's take a look at the Docker, Docker Compose file. Um, let's just use Vim. Docker Compose. Oh, I don't have Vim. Okay, sudo apt install Vim. Yes. Uh, Vim gives some nice syntax highlighting to the YAML files for Docker Compose, so it's easier to kind of read it. It's more human readable, let's say. V-I-M Docker Compose. Okay. 
Um, so you see lots of information about the port, the databases it runs on. Um, even though this Docker image pulls down Mongo, you could, in theory, um, use the Docker or use the Mongo database from um, the Mongo public cloud. You did give you a free database uh, for playing around in, so that's good. Um, but in this case, we're not. We're going to pull down Mongo with the Docker containers. Okay, so I think this looks good. Nothing to change here. So let's do a Docker com mm, compose. Oh, let's pull down the images. Okay. That's going to pull down Mongo. It's going to pull down an image called API. It's going to pull down an image called Mili Search. Okay. Um, back to the documentation. Anything we should notice here? So API keys, manager Mongo database, user authentication. If you go into the API keys and token setup, this shows you how to add your chat GPT free access token key, your Bing access token key. They are the two main ones, okay? Um, the rest of them are all, yeah, there are just other AIs you can use. But, I mean, I think it works really well with the open AI one, like this one here. This is the one you have to pay for, actually, as I, as I mentioned, you have to pay. So you can add, you can add five euros credit to your account. Um, that's what I did. It's, it lasts a long time if you add five euros. Uh, so it's, it's, not, it's not expensive at all. Okay, so we have downloaded our images, but it's telling me that the API image needs to be built. So let's just run the command to build the image, okay? Now this could take a few minutes, so I'm just gonna speed up this part of the video. Okay, see you soon. We're back. Uh, the build has finished. Let's see. Um, anything else we need to do? I don't think so. Uh, I just want to confirm the, 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 the port that it's going to be running on. Docker Compose. So let's go up to the beginning. Okay, so it's going to run on to 3080. Okay, so let's run it. See what happens. So Docker Compose. I'm going to run it in debug, or sorry, I'm going to run it without putting it in the background so any errors will appear on the screen, okay? So we're just going to do Docker Compose up. See what happens. Creating MongoDB connection. Okay. Okay, so MongoDB seems to be working fine. Okay, let's see if we can connect to it. So it should be on. HTTP 127.0.0.1 and the port was 3080. Let's have a look. Ho ho! It worked! Well, why am I why am I surprised? So we can create a new account, go test at test.com com and our password can be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, and let's continue. Oh, I didn't like that. Unable to log in. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I meant to create an account. Okay, full name. Okay, so test. Test at test. Test. Uh, test at test.com. And password is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let's create our account. We save the password. Okay, we're in. So, looks very like the ChatGPT public. Um, interface. Um, what happens if we type something in? Give, oh, what's going on? Set your key in the header to chat. Okay, let's try. Uh, set an open API key. So I have an open API key I'll paste in. And let's test it. Give me the names of 100 species. Does it work? Yay, it does work. So, I mean, this is quite good. It allows you to use various different uh, AIs within the same platform, as long as you've got the API keys. Some of the open API keys are free. Uh, one of the GPG one, GPT chat one, there is a free one, but the open AI one, remember, gives you access to Dali and a lot of the other different um, 
models that are when open AI. Well, the free one only gives you access to the 3.5 chat. So you can select all of the different chats here. GPT-4, I'm not sure which is the newest one. Um, if you want to save some money, you can always use this one, the 3.5 Turbo. It's, it's so cheap, you would barely notice it. Um, something else worth noticing maybe is the, are the plugins. Um, if you can go into the plugin store and it allows you to select multiple plugins. I believe that these are GPT chat compliant plugins. So these plugins are also available if you pay for GPT. But someone in the comments can correct me on that one if I'm wrong. Um, interesting one is an image prompt. No, there is another one. The browser one. So this scrapes and summarizes uh, web page data. I haven't actually used this yet. I have my own website that I'm going to scrape with this and to see what it comes up with. So that should be interesting. Uh, I'll do that in a future video. And then you've got other ones. I don't know why the images aren't uh, working, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So uh, all your conversations are recorded here. Um, name another 50. I don't know. I've not heard of a lot of these. Salt Lake City, what's the other capital city? Ah, oh, give me names of 100 cities. Okay, I meant capital cities. Okay, a lot of North America. Anyway, my name is Tom, um, Tom Kraz. I hope you got some value out of this. If you did, please like and subscribe. It really helps my channel grow. And um, I will be back with another video on this soon enough. Thank you very much. Take it easy. Bye.